Good day, Bio 2 to 1. Welcome to Lab 2, our session on aseptic technique and cultivation. Um, so in today's session, we're going to look at identifying types of media and ways in which we can isolate bacteria using aseptic technique. So it's important to recognize in aseptic technique that microbes are ubiquitous, meaning that they can be found virtually anywhere. So the aseptic technique is really a means by which we work safely with microbes and we can isolate and treat specifically with organisms of interest. They may be of particular value or they may be pathogens, harmful microorganisms. So these aseptic techniques have many applications. For nurses, aseptic technique is relevant when changing wound dressings, treating cuts, or even in surgical procedures. So using aseptic techniques, we try to achieve a pure culture. A pure culture is composed of only one kind of microorganism. Occasionally, a mixed culture is used. In a mixed culture, there are two or more organisms that have distinct characteristics and can be separated easily. So this can be from morphological characteristics or from their genetic composition. In either situation, the organisms can be identified. When unwanted organisms are introduced into the culture, they are known as contaminants. Aseptic technique is a method that prevents the introduction of unwanted organisms into an environment. When changing wound dressings, aseptic technique is used to prevent possible infection. When working with microbial cultures, aseptic technique is used to prevent introducing additional organisms into the culture. So, in aseptic technique, we use what's known as media to grow our microorganisms. So there's two main types of media that we'll be discussing today. That's your solid media, which is agar, and then there's a liquid media, which is broth. So microbes get their nutrients from the media we use, so either the broth or the agar. And agar is actually a seaweed extract that melts at 100 degrees Celsius and solidifies at 42 degrees Celsius. So the organisms don't break down the agar. The agar is literally just a solid substrate upon which the microbes grow. The nutrients that the microbes get are the nutrients that we put into the agar. So in today's lab, we'll be looking at different types of agar and the different nutrients that we put into it. Most pathogens prefer to grow at 37 degrees Celsius on solid agar. So to achieve those temperatures, we typically put our petri dishes into an incubator after they've been inoculated. Liquid medium, known as broth, um, starts off clear, and as you add culture, the broth becomes cloudy, which is known in microbiology as turbidity. All right, so the culture becomes turbid and it becomes difficult to see through or opaque. So aseptic technique is all about working in a safe and clean way in your environment. So it starts with cleaning your workstation. So I'm just wiping down this countertop with 70% ethanol. Um, this would have been done before, but I like to just double check and be extra cautious. It doesn't need to be extra cautious, all right? So once your workstation is clean, your plates have been sterilized in the autoclave. So you know that you have a safe surface to work with for your plates, all right? So when I say plates, I'm talking about these Petri dishes which have their agar inside of it. So we said that agar was a solid medium, but there are also different types of agar. Agar could be nutrient agar, could be blood agar, could be clad agar, could be McConkey agar. And each of those different types of agar are used for a slightly different purpose. Some of them could be selective, some of them could be differential. And when I say that, some could select four particular organisms and other plates can show a color change when a particular organism is present. So just bear that in mind as we go along. I'm sure it will be covered again in your class lectures. So what we have here are two different types of agar. This is a blood agar. Typically we use sheep's blood and we introduce it to the agar while it's still molten. And when it solidifies, agar now becomes hard, a 
hard substance or layer which has the nutrients of the blood within it all right so blood agar can be a differential in that if you have organisms which are able to break down red blood cells you will see a color change in the agar itself it can become transparent or can have a slightly greenish hue all right so nutrient agar is a straw colored um, medium solid medium and when you introduce your organisms on it what you see is little spots which are known as colonies all right and they can be varying sizes they can be varying shapes um, varying elevations all right so we use uh, the morphological description or the description of what they look like on the, on the petri dish to differentiate between different species on that level so when we look at them under the microscope, there are different things that we look for to differentiate between species, whether they're gram-positive, gram-negative, the shape of the cells. But when we look at the entire colony, we can also identify certain species based on their pattern of growth. All right? Now bear in mind that each colony is millions of cells, but the overall pattern of growth is distinctive, depending on which type of organism you have. One of the other things that's important to note is you need to get a pure colony because pure colonies have slightly different characteristics than organisms that grow very closely together. Right? When you get a pure culture and it has a sufficient amount of medium around it, it can absorb enough nutrients that the colony grows in a, in a larger way and shows more of its morphological characteristics. When the colonies are too condensed and you have too many cells per unit area, then you have the colonies growing smaller and in a reduced way. Right, so what I'm going to demonstrate now is some of the techniques we use to get cultures from different types of surfaces, right? So what we're trying to do is isolate particular organisms that we may find in different environments. So the first one I'm going to do is using a nutrient agar plate. I'm just gonna open it up to the air. As we said, the microbes are ubiquitous. They're everywhere. So we're gonna see what type of bacteria we can grow from the air. While that's going on, um, we also have another plate here, which I'm going to draw a line down half the plate. And on one half of the plate, I'm going to put an ungloved thumbprint Just lightly touching it, right? To see what type of microbes I would have had on my thumb. And on the other half of that plate, I'm going to put a swab. So this is a sterile swab. We're gonna take this swab and we're going to take some of the microbes that were there and just spread it over half of that plate. All right, then you discard of the swab in a biohazard. So by this time you could close back the environment swab. It should be about two minutes and we'll see what grows there. Last but not least we're going to demonstrate the quadrant streak technique which is going to isolate uh, individual colonies out of a mixed culture. right? So here we have a mixed culture in a broth, which is the liquid medium. You can see if it's that it's slightly cloudy. I'm gonna employ a technique here known as flaming. So I'm gonna turn on the gas and this Bunsen burner. Right. So you see the Bunsen burner burns with a blue flame. So you wanna be very safe in the lab. Make sure it has a yellow tip so you could see it visibly. This technique is known as flaming, and this is how we sterilize our wire loop, our 
trusty wire loop is a very important tool in microbiology. So we know that the loop is sterilized when it becomes red hot in this Bunsen burner. Right. So we've achieved that. Give the loop a second to cool and working as close to the flame as possible. I like to think of it as a mushroom cloud and all the air above it is sterilized. So working underneath the flame, we have a sterile area. With our cool loop, we go into the broth. Take a loop full. And we use that as the inoculum on our clean blood agar plate. So hold any loop at an angle, we inoculate just one corner of the plate. You may notice that I keep a finger where I inoculated the plate just to mentally remind myself of where I have inoculated in case it becomes difficult to see. And then you sterilize your loop again by flaming. What this does is it causes a decimal reduction in the number of cells per unit volume as we uh, streak along the plate, streak each quadrant. So by the last quadrant of the plate, if we had a thousand um, colony forming units per milliliter, by the last quadrant, we have one colony forming unit per milliliter. And when we have one colony forming unit or one CFU per milliliter, then we'll be able to see the true morphology of these microbes. What you may have observed just now is me making sure that the loop was cool by touching it on a clean area of the plate. Just making sure that the loop isn't too hot because this could burn the microbes, causing them to die off prematurely and you wouldn't achieve the expected result. Also when you're streaking the plate, you want to make sure that the loop is held at an angle so it doesn't dig into the agar. Right, you don't need the loop to be too hot. And also I rotate the plates as I am going along and keep my finger on the last area that I've streaked just in case the streak lines aren't visible to the human eye. Make sure that your loop is flame sterilized. And also make sure that your plate is labeled. All right. What you can do from there is put the plate into the incubator at 37 degrees Celsius for 24 hours and you will see the microbial growth. So it should look something like this. Where you can see different types of colonies coming out of the culture of the initial inoculum Coming on to the last quadrant, you get individual colonies, which look like separate dots on their own. And what you're seeing here is alpha hemolysis, where it's actually clearing the red blood cells around each colony. All right. 
and leaving a slightly greenish color. Now beta hemolysis will leave an absolutely clear region around each colony forming unit. But in either event, if an organism gets into your body and starts destroying your red blood cells, you're going to have a physiological reaction because you will start to become anemic. All right? So now we're able to look at these different colonies and differentiate between the different types. One appears more mucoid, one appears more flat and gray, one appears more of a, a whitish color. All right? So we're able to make that distinction and that's the basis of aseptic technique and um, the quadrant streak technique um, in microbiology. We also demonstrated flaming today um, and looked at different types of media and discussed slightly selective and differential media. So that's it for lab one.